Hi everybody, I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Joining me now is Cleveland Mayor Justin Bibb. Mayor Bibb, thank you so much for joining me. Excited to be here. We are right now in Cleveland at the Under 30 Summit backstage. So before we get started, can you give us a sense of what the entrepreneurial spirit is like in Cleveland, being that it had a hand in making the yeah. world's first billionaire? Cleveland has an amazing uh, can-do spirit. We know how to get things done. And, and as you mentioned, uh, the world's first billionaire got his start right here in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, John D. Rockefeller. And so it's that same spirit that's guiding uh, Cleveland's comeback under our administration. Why do you think Cleveland specifically has that can-do attitude? Where does that come from? Well, I think for a long time, uh, folks have doubted our ability to do uh, big things. I think about one of my predecessors, uh, the first black mayor elected of a major American city, uh, Carl B. Stokes. Uh, in the 1960s, our river caught on fire. Uh, and Mayor Stokes went across the nation on a pollution tour talking about the importance of clean water, which led to the Clean Water Act, which then led to the EPA. And so we have always been doubted in our city, whether it's Carl B. Stokes or the fact that we have an amazing uh, hospital in Cleveland, in the Cleveland Clinic, where we take care of the sickest people in the world. So we have a can-do spirit, a spirit of innovation, a spirit of collaboration, and that is what's really driving our new comeback right now as a great American city once again. I want to talk about that can-do spirit and you specifically. Yeah. You want to make Cleveland a 15-minute yeah. city. That's been your initiative now for a Absolutely. while. Absolutely. Before we get into it, what is a 15-minute city? Uh, for me, it's all about having safe, healthy, thriving uh, neighborhoods all across our city. I saw this during the pandemic where uh, we really saw firsthand how important the quality of the amenities in your neighborhood were, whether it be a grocery store within 15 minutes, whether it be a park that's well lit, well programmed, or whether it be a job you can walk to or get to within 15 minutes. And so when you think about the needs of cities like Cleveland and the needs of our country, if we as leaders focus on safe, healthy, thriving communities, then we're gonna see allow us to see our potential being reached. And that's really a big part of our vision here in Cleveland. I've lived in cities now for over a decade. Yeah. A 15 minute city sounds like a dream. <laughs> How are we implementing yeah. it? Well, one of the first things our administration did when I took office was we did a, a baseline 15 minute city index to really examine what are the needs and pain points and challenges to get us there. What we discovered is that in many cases, we are a 15 minute city, but the quality of those amenities aren't where they need to be. So we did a couple things to fix that. Number one, for the first time in our city's history, we're doing a comprehensive master plan of all of our parks and rec centers. We're also making sure that we don't have any food deserts in our community, particularly in black and brown neighborhoods in Cleveland. And uh, we're bringing back our world-class waterfronts from Lake Erie to the Cuyahoga River to make sure that everybody has access to uh, the great waterfronts in our community as well too. The waterfront is stunning. I it was is. just in a room yeah. upstairs and you could just see, I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. And what exactly is this 15 minute city vision going to do for businesses specifically in Cleveland? Well, uh, in any city, uh, small businesses are, are the backbone uh, of our economy. They represent over 80% of the new jobs uh, in mm -hmm. our city. And so if you have a thriving 15 minute city with great neighborhood businesses from grocery stores to dry cleaners uh, to computer or hardware stores, then those neighborhoods are gonna thrive. You know, uh, one of my uh, big philosophies is this, your main streets determine your side streets. And so if you have thriving commercial corridors in our neighborhoods, you're gonna see more opportunity and more prosperity long term. And you talked to another leader about this recently. Can yes. you tell us a little bit about that conversation? Well, uh, you know, as any mayor will tell you, uh, we love stealing each other's ideas. And so uh, before I, I became mayor, I saw that the mayor of Paris, Mayor Hidalgo, was leading this effort during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And I quickly said, if I became mayor of Cleveland one day, I want to make that vision a reality here. And so we are now on track to be one of the first 15 minute cities in North America right here in Cleveland, Ohio. You're proud of Cleveland, yes. that is for sure. You're yes. born and raised in Cleveland. Yeah. What is Cleveland's best kept secret? What do we need to know about? 
Well, uh, we actually have the second largest theater district in the country outside of Broadway. And we just did a ribbon cutting for our brand new marquees. So uh, we have a world-class arts and culture uh, district here in Cleveland. Great food, we just talked about that. Uh, but the secret sauce to Cleveland are its people. We have some of the most resilient, hardworking, nicest people uh, on the planet. And I'm so happy to call Cleveland my home and I'm so happy to be mayor of my hometown as well too. I do now want to turn to the summit a little bit. Yeah. The under 30s now consist of millennials and Gen Zs. So as a millennial yourself. Yes, an old millennial. <laughs> likewise, likewise. I mean, I can tell whenever I wake up in the morning, you know, I feel it. I feel yeah. that I am an, on the older side of being yeah. a millennial. But what, would you, what advice would you give to Gen Z and what are the differences you're seeing in how they're doing business specifically? You know, one of the things that I learned early in my uh, short career of 36 years old is uh, failure is one of life's greatest lessons. I've learned so much about um, resilience, about determination, about the power of hope by many of the failures that I experience uh, growing up and living and leading uh, in this city. You know, one of the biggest reasons why I became mayor is uh, my cousin was murdered uh, when I was in grad school, when I came back to Cleveland from, from New York City. And it was in that lesson I learned the importance and the power of giving back, the importance and the power of public service and getting involved in I hope that all of our attendees at this summit realize that they have great grit, great determination, and great hope to achieve uh, their, their dreams. First, I'm so sorry about your cousin, mm -hmm. but second, a lot of us can pinpoint one moment, maybe even one failure that yeah. changed everything for us. And you look back and you say, I'm very grateful that happened yeah. for X, Y, yeah. and Z. What's that moment for you? Well. Um, before I became mayor and wanted to go into politics, I thought I was gonna be the next LeBron James. I was gonna be the starting guard uh, at Duke, uh, but I tore my meniscus my sophomore year of high school. Uh, That's my, a tough injury. It, it was that hard. is a tough injury. It was hard. Uh, and my mom quickly said, look, you're not the next LeBron James. You better get in those books or maybe get involved in politics. So I volunteered in my first campaign as a junior in high school and the rest is history. I want to read you a quote and then get your take on it. Yeah. I just saw this recently. FM Alexander said this, people do not decide their futures, mm. they decide their habits and their habits decide their future. What is one habit you can pinpoint that said, if I didn't have this, I wouldn't have the future I have, I wouldn't have the today I have. Um, one of the things I try to do every day is really reflect on what's working for me and what's not working and never forget the power of self reinvention. You know, one of my favorite books is the autobiography of Malcolm X. And I often go to that book to really reflect on um, how it's so important to embrace change. Um, and if you don't take that time to take a deep breath and, and be introspective, you don't get that personal growth you need to become an effective leader long term. How do you pivot? Because a lot of people, even when they know in the back of their head, hey, this isn't working for yeah. me, they might say, you know, I've dumped a lot of time into this. Yeah. So how do you get that courage to pivot and say, this isn't working and let's try something else? Well, uh, you can, you'll quickly learn in, in the job of being a mayor, uh, the importance of listening to your residents, uh, listening to your cabinet, uh, listening to key stakeholders in the community to get feedback on uh, what's working, what's not working. And so uh, the best way to pivot, in my opinion, is really embracing that pivoting is okay uh, because sometimes you don't get it right. Uh, and that's what leadership is all about. And what is Mayor Bibb today telling 16-year-old, 17-year-old, younger Justin Bibb yeah. who tore his meniscus, who doesn't yeah. know what he's exactly going to do? What's your one piece of advice? Greatness lies within all of us and never let anyone tell you you can't achieve greatness. Mayor Bibb, I appreciate the time today. Thank you so much for joining me. Honored to be here. Come see us again soon. I will. <laughs>